So I'll, uh, I'll just start off. I, um, I will be leading you here today. I have been invited to give you some opening comments that will hopefully stimulate some thinking, but I'll be learning and joining in and participating like everybody else here. Making one quick correction. Uh, the leadership is, quite frankly, dispersed right across the room. Bonjour et merci d'être venu aujourd'hui. I am very happy to be here today with you for the fifth annual Human Rights Learning Forum. The theme of today is from recommendations to action. It is a little bit different from other forums. In fact, we'll be focusing a little bit more on action than maybe on discussion recommendations. But there needs to be some healthy and difficult discussions. There needs to be some strong and thoughtful recommendations in order for us to move into action. I want to thank you for offering up your time today, all of you, and for coming here today to share your thoughts, your lived experience, your ideas. All of these things will help to shape the Ottawa Police Service and our equity, diversity, and inclusion action plan. Together, we're going to focus on action, as I talked about. Uh, we'll need to talk about aspirations. And aspirations are things that often don't get done. But we'll point to a bright line in the future. We'll point to a mountaintop that we want to scale to, knowing somewhere in our hearts and our guts that we're not necessarily going to get there, but the effort is what's important. Expectations. Um, there's a huge amount of expectation in this room that somehow out of this effort today, the majority of us will walk out of here feeling that we have fully discussed this topic, we have thoughtfully come up with all the recommendations, and we've crafted a masterful action plan with full commitment to implement and achieve all the outcomes. And that simply is not going to be possible. <coughs> Expectations we have on ourselves. Me as a police chief in a new organization, and you as long-serving, long-dedicated members of the city or the service. We have always been inspired by our community and I am increasingly inspired by the members of this organization um, because we truly have a sense of what we want to do and the need to do it and the urgency to do it. Um, there is a joint commitment to this, the public and the service working together to advance policing in the city. Policing is a shared responsibility. It is not the responsibility of chief of police. I have a set of responsibilities, but policing and public safety is a shared responsibility. Human rights, the promotion of it and the protection of it, is not the responsibility of the Chief of Police or the Ottawa Police Service. It is a shared responsibility. The advancement of equity, diversity, and inclusion in any organization is not the responsibility of the CEO. It's the responsibility of every single member of that organization and every member of society in which that organization operates. We all have roles and responsibilities. In fact, policing in its purest form goes back tens of thousands of years, in this country at least, to the Bear, the Bear Clan. And there were people of the community, from the community, who provided public safety for the community. But it wasn't just their job, it was the entire community's job. The Peelian principle, Sir Robert Peel, very clearly stated, the police are the public and the public are the police. Some of us wear a uniform and some of us get paid, not too badly actually, for providing full-time police service. But we all have a responsibility for policing public safety, the protection of human rights and the promotion of human rights. You've heard a little bit about the people in the room. I want to share a few more insights in them. These are numbers that were provided for me in my speech. You'll notice every now and then I go off script. There are apparently 41 residents, maybe a few more from the hands that went up, 31 community organizations, 27 service providers, 12 community associations, 35 others representing other police organizations, the City of Ottawa bylaw, human rights organizations, including the Canadian Human Rights Organization, the City of Ottawa staff, um, OPS board members, and I'm grateful for their presence here, one senator, one Gatineau police senior officer, and one RCMP representative, um, and many, many OPS members. My second correction, and God bless you, Sahada, I love you to death, but the police officers who are here, including myself, were not forced to be here. Many of them are here on their own time. Many of them self-identified when they saw the advertisement to come because they felt it was important for themselves as an individual, for themselves as a member of the organization, for the organization itself, and for the city in which most of the OPS members live in. There may have been one person forced to be here, and that was me, because I had to give the speech. <laughs> I'm glad to be forced to such an event. I want to acknowledge the residents here, and I want to acknowledge the youth who will lead whatever comes out from this going forward. Your presence and your participation here today are testament to the strength of our city. I want to personally thank you for being here. You've provided many great ideas in the past and suggestions, and your responses to the questions on the registration form themselves have been instructive. I also want to stress that this is the first step 
in the action planning process. This is not the last step. We're going to move fast, though, despite my last name. Just checking to see if you're listening. OK, good. Got the slowly joke. Can move on. Um, by the end of January, we will have a comprehensive action plan. And by, what, by that, I mean um, the first year real goals and outcomes will be articulated. The core actions that we're going to be focusing on will be summarized. Implementation and resources will be applied to it. And accountabilities, including my own, will be attached. It will be well articulated, well promoted. And you should see your words, your thoughts, your experiences expressed very clearly in them. Your participation here today is going to help us to build this action plan. The goal is to make meaningful progress on equity, diversity, and inclusion. It will be our roadmap for the next few years. It will focus on the next year, 2020, but it will bring us out the next few years. We're going to build on the great work that's already been done by people who've been in this organization. I think the, the longest serving member, I believe, is up around 40 years on this job. And they were doing this work 40 years ago. It might not have been satisfactory for all, but it is work that this organization has committed itself to long before I arrived and will no doubt continue to commit itself to long after I leave. It will promote and protect human rights and it will advance EDI within the organization. As you know, last month we released two independent reports that we commissioned in order to continue our leadership in this work of EDI. The diversity audit was prepared by the audit team from the, the Greybridge Markham group and they're here today with representatives and the traffic stop race data collection report was prepared by the Ontario Tech York team again both of them here and you'll hear from them later on in the day both reports provided meaningful insights on progress made and work still to be done both reports demonstrate the leadership role that the OPS has played in policing and is continuing to at the front edge of advancing these difficult areas let me be clear, bias, racial profiling, and other forms of discrimination exist in society, in every single one of us who are here today. And this means, obviously, that it exists in policing, and it exists in the Ottawa Police Service. No matter how much I've quickly grown to love this organization and value its amazing contribution to the city, we as a, as a group of human beings within an organization struggle with this, as every one of you do. These are not easy issues to face in any profession, and particularly in the policing profession, which is one of the most visible and important institutions that support and underpin a functioning democracy. I think, however, there has been an overfocus on the performance of our frontline officers. There has been an overfocus on the activities, thoughts, decisions, and actions of individual members of the Ottawa Police Service and any police service. And there has been an underfocus on the systems that bring those officers and members into the organization, promote and deploy them, the intelligence-led systems that identify areas of risk in the community and identify activities and actions and metrics and measures that put those officers into those communities. I will tell you very, very hand over heart, and it, st it starts at the top of this organization from the person speaking at this microphone, acts of individual bias, discrimination or racism will not be tolerated in the organization, not at my level or any other level in the organization. But I will tell you the vast majority of the issues that we're facing is an organization that is not operating at an optimal level. That our systems are poorly designed, poorly implemented, almost never evaluated, and very rarely corrected, even when we know there are unintended, in some cases, devastating outcomes on the members themselves and on the communities that they're sworn to serve and protect. I am the first chief of color, and we talk about expectations. Just like when Obama became president, it didn't become a kumbaya moment. Please do not place on my shoulders, which are already feeling the burden of weight, that somehow because I am here, all will be fixed and good. And that message is to the members of this organization, as well as to the community members who are gathered here. I will bring my full heart and soul to this effort, but I cannot be the person expected to change all of this, nor will I expect to be the person blamed for any failure to do it. I will take my full responsibility. But this is a collective effort. I'll also tell you that I have been the victim of organizations who failed to advance equity, inclusion, and diversity. I've been the victim of a resident of communities where that was not the reception of service I got from institutions, including the policing institution. I can tell you that I may have been a perpetrator of some of the problems that we're talking about here today because I was a police officer for 27 years. And therefore, at different points in my career, when I thought I was doing the good thing, the righteous thing, the effective thing, 
In fact, I was maybe doing the wrong thing and having the wrong impacts on people. I will tell you that no matter how progressive the Ottawa Police Service or any other police service is right now, 20 years from now, history will look back and say, I can't believe they did that. They thought that, that that was their goals. Because as society and as organizations and individuals, we grow and we learn and we develop. So I hope to be part of the solution, but I know I'm also part of the problem. I helped to design and implement and evaluate many of those same systems that I talked about that have failed our, our members and have failed our communities. And therefore, I have a lot of skin in the game, both in terms of being part of the problem and ultimately being part of the solution. I'm going to do my best to speak more eloquently and forcefully that on behalf of the Ottawa Police Service members. Because as I've traveled across this organization and listened to them and heard their concerns, I want to, as best I can, again attempt to represent their concerns. The members feel that they have been overly blamed for these issues, particularly on the front line. The vast majority of our people are decent, caring human beings. The vast majority of our people live in this city. They receive the same police services. Their children have the same fears as Sahada has expressed here today. As parents, they have the same fears. They are concerned that they will not get equitable and effective and cost-effective services. They're concerned that the chief of police is tone deaf and is not acting on a fierce urgency from within their own ranks. They fear that when there is a crisis, like a violent encounter, a tragic death, that their chief will not represent them in, in the way that they want to hear. Even within the ranks, there is a division because there are members that experience bias and prejudice and racism and sexism and homophobia within the ranks. And these are officers caught in an even more uniquely binding situation. They can't go home and take their skin off, nor should they. They can't go home and take their sexual orientation off, nor should they. They can't go home and take their race and their ethnicity and their religion off, nor should they. But they have to exist in two very strong, powerful communities. The communities where they grew up and were born into, and the communities where they come to work every day for 10, 11, 14, 16 hours a day. These are uniquely difficult challenges that our members face, and they never feel satisfied, and they may not even feel satisfied today with my efforts to articulate on their behalf this very, very difficult issue. I also want to represent the community that I was born into, the Jamaican community. I self-identify as black. My, pet, my father is white, my mother is colored. I have a whole bunch of different religions in my immediate household. And every one of them expressed to me over the last 27 years and in the last month, why aren't the police doing more? How can you sanction these things? Why aren't you as a person, as a leader, you're the chief, fix it. Why can't you speak better on behalf of the communities that are not being served and protected in the way that they should be? So let's all agree. We're all part of this. We're part of the problem. We sure as hell have to be part of the solution going forward. The OPS accepts the responsibility that individual bias, elements of discrimination, and racist acts may be involved in the level of disproportionality that exists in the reports that we've heard and in the outcomes of poorly designed systems. We also accept that poorly, these poor systems are a barrier for our own members to bring, them full self, bring their full selves to work, to experience a safe and healthy and welcoming environment, and to advance their own desire to serve and protect in the best way possible. We're fully committed to doing all we can, including working with all of our members, our board, and all the groups represented here today. There are three outcomes that I would like us to focus on. First, to prevent in every instance and address in every case individual acts of racism or discrimination by OPS members. Okay, I want to be clear, OPS members towards OPS members and OPS members towards the community. We have a term in policing called blue on blue, when for whatever combination of reasons, officers confront each other and do damage to each other. So let's prevent blue on blue within this organization. Discrimination, bias, racism in all of its different forms. And let's, pre let's prevent blue on you, you the community. And I include our officers and our members within that you, because we are part of this community in large numbers.
The second, to continuously improve all relevant systems. All of those who are being designed right now before they've been implemented, all those currently in place, and all future ones. Let's continually improve them through an EDI lens supported by the action plan that we're developing to ensure that our members are able to work in a bias-neutral organization and that in turn they're able to deliver bias-neutral services to all of our communities in Ottawa. And the third, that we measure our success through third parties who come in and evaluate our efforts. And yes, using ongoing race and demographic based data and also to assess the felt and lived experience of our members and our community. We have to work together to move from reports and recommendations to greater action to achieving these specific outcomes. It's about creating a police service that our community and our members deserve. I'd like to thank the diversity audit team, the Ontario Tech York team for your comprehensive reports and your efforts today. I'd like to thank the community and the police members who have been come here today voluntarily, who have contributed along the way to date and will continue to contribute throughout the development of the action plan and the implementation of it. There is a fierce urgency, and I promise I won't move too slowly. That was a joke again. <laughs> we need to be here today to listen, to feel, to speak truth, to hear truth. We need to agree to disagree. We need to find common ground. We need to find a way to work together and move forward together. If we do those things, we will make a difference. I want to thank you again. Let's do this together. Merci. Thank you. God bless.